Once you have your manuscript ready and formatted, it's time to set your own unique theme. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through all the steps of customizing a theme of your very own so that it has your perfect aesthetic and you can save it to apply to any other future books you'd like to format using Atticus in the future. Let's dive right in. With your book open in Atticus, click Formatting from the top center to open the Theme Library. Atticus has 17 presets for you to choose from, or you can create a new theme from scratch. Think of your theme as the master style guide that governs the overall aesthetic of your entire book. If you want to customize a preset theme, you'll click the three dots beside the title of the theme underneath the thumbnail and choose Edit as New Theme. Next, you just work your way through each section, setting your preferences as you go. The chapter heading settings will dictate how the title area of each chapter is displayed. Add a check mark to the chapter details you'd like to display in the heading section for each chapter, and each element you check will open more options for you to customize. For number, title, and subtitle, you'll choose the font, alignment, style, and size. Atticus offers you the ability to automatically add chapter numbers to each chapter within the body section of your book. So for this feature specifically, you can also choose the chapter number view. You can use this in addition to a chapter title or on its own. If you'd like to add a image to your chapter headings, check the box to set your options and choose your image. If you enable chapter image, you can decide whether you want to have the same image displayed on every chapter of your book, or if you'd like to upload individual images for each and every chapter. If you toggle use individual chapter images on, you'll upload the images in each individual chapter after finalizing your theme. If you're using the same image for every chapter, you can upload it here and set it as an image element. Choose where you'd like the image to display in relation to your chapter number, title, and subtitle. You can also set the size and alignment. If you want the image to display across the entire page behind the text of your print book and extending to the very edges of the page or full bleed, choose background image under placement settings. An important note is that e-reading devices do not allow images to be displayed behind the text of a page. So if you choose background image, it will only show in the chapter heading portion of the EPUB version of your book. You can adjust the opacity of your image and choose if you would like to have light text or the default dark text, depending on the image you're working with. And then set the image to either extend only to the margins of the page or full bleed. Under paragraph, we have first sentence formatting. First sentence refers to the first sentence in every chapter. You can enable drop caps and or lead in small caps. If you have either of these options enabled and they don't appear to be showing in your chapter, make sure you don't have a blank space before the first line or letter in the body section of your chapter. When to use the first sentence formatting allows you to either only use the drop caps or lead in small caps at the very beginning of each chapter in the first paragraph, or you can set it after each scene break. Throughout your book, you can set your paragraphs to start either with an indent or an extra space between each one. If you choose indent, the first sentence of any chapter and after each scene break will not be indented. That's per industry standard. You can override an indent at any point in your book by pressing shift enter at the end of the preceding paragraph and before the line you want to start without an indent. Atticus supports subheadings at a level of H2 through H6 providing you with the flexibility to structure your content with various heading levels and styles. With some creative thought, you can use these headings not only for organization, but also for adding text or paragraph styles to your content. You'll set your style choices in the theme settings here and apply the heading styles to your text from within the writing editor. You can easily select your preferred subheading level by using the drop-down menu located in the toolbar in the writing editor. If you're importing a document from Word, Atticus will automatically recognize Word default styles heading two through heading six. Heading one will import as your chapter title. If you leave your headings at their default settings and do not customize them in the theme, 
they're sized so that heading two is the largest and going down to heading six, which is just slightly larger than the body font size. Just so you're aware, what you see in the writing editor is not how the headings will export. Always refer to the previewer for a more accurate representation and proof your exports carefully to be sure you're 100% confident with the final results. If you use scene breaks in your book, you can choose to separate each scene with an image, without an image, which leads a extra large space will be used, or with no visible scene break at all. If you use an image, you can choose one of the options that Atticus provides, or you can upload your very own. You'll be able to adjust the size according to its width. If you have notes in your book, either footnotes you imported from your source docx file or notes you're creating within Atticus itself, you can set their location here. You can choose to have all your notes appear at the end of each chapter or at the end of the book for either EPUB or print. The print version of your book also has the option to use footnotes, which will appear at the bottom of the page they're listed on. Since ebooks don't use pages, footnotes aren't an option for the EPUB version. As an important note, every e-reading device is slightly different and the rule for notes will be somewhat dependent on the device the book is being loaded to. For example, some will use the exact settings chosen here, but others will be more interactive, displaying a pop-up of the note when tapped. The default print layout settings will adhere to industry standards, but you're welcome to adjust as you prefer for your book. We recommend leaving margins at the default setting unless you're printing a book less than 150 pages. However, if you choose to change them, the inside margin should always be larger than the outside margin to allow for the gutter or the crease of your book's spine. Justified and hyphens are settings specifically for the print version of your book, as these will both be determined by the individual device for the ebook versions. Keep options will control whether your scene break images and or your subheadings are kept with the following paragraph should that paragraph be pushed to the next page. Layout priority refers to the bottom of each page throughout your book. This is one of the most difficult formatting features to program on an algorithmic book level. And it's one of the main reasons professional book formatters charge considerably for their time and effort. I'll go through each setting here. Widows and orphans. In book formatting, widows are short lines or single words at the end of a paragraph that appear alone at the top of the next page. Orphans are short lines or single words at the beginning of a paragraph that appear alone at the bottom of a page where the rest of the paragraph is split to the next one. Both of these are generally considered undesirable. And if this setting is enabled, Atticus will ensure they don't happen but it may come at the cost of the occasionally unbalanced page. A balanced page spread refers to the even distribution of content, space, and visual elements across two facing pages in a book layout. This will create a harmonious and aesthetically pleasing design. Most particularly, the last line on both pages will be equal when this setting is enabled, but it may come at the cost of the occasional widow or orphan. Best of both is what we highly recommend. This is the Atticus algorithm that will prevent widows and orphans whenever possible, but also adjust for page balance as much as it, as it can without compromising the overall layout to any great degree. Typography will handle the font styling for your book. The body font, font size, and line spacing will be universal throughout your entire book. Selecting large print will automatically adjust your font, font size, line spacing, and text alignment to meet international standards for large print books. The header and footer will add pagination and common reference points, such as the title of your book, your author name, uh, or the chapter title. This will be automatically added according to the information in your book details and or your chapters. You can choose a layout using the scroll bar underneath the thumbnails, and you can set the font and size below that. If you have the page number in the header, it will not show on the first page of any chapter or page type in your book, and the chapter heading will always override it. If you have the page number in the footer, it will appear on all pages in your book unless you hide it on specific pages or chapters. Finally, you'll want to select a trim size for your book. 
Atticus has a color coding system to help you choose a trim size that will be available with your preferred publisher, Amazon's KDP or Ingram Spark. There are also popular trim sizes accepted through most major printers. Once you've worked your way through all the settings and have your theme designed, you must click save as new theme from the very top of the page. Give your theme a logical name and it will appear in your theme library throughout your account. If you leave without saving, your theme will not save and you will have to start from the beginning again. You can click the three dots beside the title of any customized theme to edit, rename, duplicate, or delete at any time. You can also tap the heart at the bottom right of any theme and have it appear at the front of your list for easy access in the future. Once your theme is saved, there are a few additional page or chapter level settings that you can adjust as needed. If you click writing from the top center, you'll return to your content editor. Open any chapter or page in your book and to the right of the title, you'll see a gear icon. This will open the chapter options menu, which will allow you to override certain theme settings or choose additional preferences for the single chapter or page alone. Hide chapter image hides just the chapter image. Hide chapter heading will hide the entire chapter heading area. So your text will begin at the very top of the page. Hide page number hides just the page number from the entire chapter. Hide header footer hides both the header and the footer from the entire chapter. Hide first sentence formatting will remove the drop cap and or lead in small caps if you have them set in your theme from the beginning of your chapter. Hide in table of contents will remove this page or chapter so it doesn't appear as a listing in your TOC, but clearly still appears as content in your book. Use smaller chapter title reduces the size of the font for your chapter title, which is useful when you have very long words such as acknowledgements that may not fit on the page in your standard chapter title sizing. Invert text color is used for books that have their theme set to use light text over a dark background image, but may have some pages that don't actually use the background image. Now that you have the perfect theme for your book, if you haven't checked out our previous tutorials to help you get the layout and the page style just right, you're going to want to check this tutorial over here. We also have more advanced tutorials and special highlight features in this playlist over here. As always, I wish you happy publishing and all the best with your book.